Well, hello, and welcome to Solving Trig Equations Algebraically. Now, we've kind of already done this. Um, to prove it to you, suppose we have a trig equation right here that says sine x equals uh, the square root of 3 divided by 2. And we're solving for x's between 0 and 2 pi. Now, we've done this because we looked at the root 3 over 2 and said, hey, I think if I used my special triangle, actually let's draw it over here, um, we have something to do with root 3 and a 2. And if we looked at it and said, well, what angle would have a sign that's root 3 over 2? It would be this angle down here, which is pi by 3. So we go, I think pi by 3 is one of our answers. So we would list it, and we would be correct. To get the other answer, we would look at our uh, grid, Oop, not very well drawn, but anyway, and use the cast rule and say to ourselves, where is sine going to be a positive result? Well, that would be here and also in this quadrant. Now, we have our pi by 3, which happens to be in the first quadrant, so I'm going to draw that and say, yep, there's pi by 3. So there's one of our answers. And if we build the same reference angle of pi by 3 in the other desired quadrant, that is over here, all i got to do now is name this angle. I've got to name it starting with my terminal arm here, or my initial arm, sorry, and then ending with my terminal arm over here. So I've got to name this angle. And that's going to be pi take away one-third of pi, so it would actually be two-thirds pi. So these would be my two solutions, um, uh, given this restricted domain. So we've already solved trig equations algebraically. Now I'm going to take the same trig equation that I have here, and I'm going to show you how I could make it look different. So I'm going to clear the screen, show you how I can work backwards. What if I multiplied both sides, say, by 2? So uh, even though it's off the screen here, it would look like this. You'd have 2 times sine x equals root 3, and then maybe even bring the root 3 over and do something like this. So now I look at this and I go, okay, uh, I could have presented the question like this, and it would have said solve. Now, all I would have done differently is I would have isolated the sine x. I would have brought the root 3 over and then divided by 2, and then I would have carried on exactly as I did before. So there's really nothing that earth-shatteringly different. So let's do um, another example, and uh, then we'll come back with some different stuff later. So in this next example, I would like to solve the following. Uh, 2 times sine squared x minus sine x minus 1. Well, this time I can't solve for sine x because there's a sine squared as well in the mix. So what I can do differently is I'm going to try to factor this. Now, sometimes it makes it easier if you do a little substitution here. In other words, Instead of calling this sine x squared, I'm going to put a q in where that sine x is. And so this would be 2 times q squared minus q minus 1 equals 0. Okay, all I've done is I substituted in the letter q for any time when I spotted a sine x. It just makes it a little easier to look at and say, oh, I know how to factor this. What if I did something like this? 2q times a q, okay, and then over here I put in a 1 times a 1. All i got to do is get my plus and minus correct so that I end up with a negative 1q in the middle. So I want this to be negative so that I have a negative 2q and then a plus 1q. And if you expand all this out, you'll see that it does work. Now, I'm going to do something else. I am going to re-substitute back in sine x for the q. So this would actually be 2 times sine x plus 1. And then over here, I would have sine x 
minus 1. And now I can actually take these two um, bracketed expressions and equate them to 0 and then solve for x. So here we go. We're on, on the home stretch here. This one could equal 0, and this one over here could equal 0. Okay, so uh, let's see which one would be easier to do. Um, well, you can start with this one, I guess. Bring the 1 over and then divide by 2. So in other words, I'm going to isolate sine x. So this would be negative 1 divided by 2. Now, um, I look at the 1 over 2, and again, I think of a special triangle. So I'm just going to draw a mini version of it here, where I have a 2 and a 1, and there's a root 3 over here. And which angle has a sine of 1 over 2? It's this angle up here. So the reference angle that I'm going to be working with is pi over 6. Now I just got to decide which quadrant that I want to be in. This time I want the sine to be negative, right? Because over here, this is supposed to be sine equals a negative 1 half. So that means I want to be in this quadrant and this quadrant. So I'm going to build my reference angle of pi by 6 in each of these quadrants. Okay, so now... I just got to name these angles. So this first one is pi plus pi by 6. So pi plus pi by 6. Or if I put it all together, 7 pi by 6. So that's one of my answers. Okay. And then the other one is going to be all the way over to here. It's like saying 2 pi and then back it up by pi by 6. So I like to think of that as 2 pi take away pi by 6 which would be the same as 11 pi by 6. That's another answer. And then I have one other answer coming from this stuff over here. Let's just put a divider there. And that is I want sine x to equal 1. Now, that doesn't come from a special triangle. So what I'm going to do, it's easier if I just think of the graph. Remember the old sine graph? Looks like that. When does it equal 1? Well, right here. And where is here? Where is this? Well, this is 2 pi, and this is pi, so this is pi by 2. So that's another answer. Okay, so that's my three answers. Now, um, I gave these with the um, restriction between 0 and 2 pi, but there's nothing to stop us from listing these. I'm just going to clear the screen here and giving the so-called general solution. Okay, so I'm just going to list those, and then I think we'll stop. The general solutions would look like this. We had uh, 7 pi by 6, we had 11 pi by 6, and we had pi by 2. And each of these, I'm simply going to tack on um, a full cycle of, of um, sine, which means um, any multiple of 2 pi. And that's for all of these. And that gives me all the infinite solutions that come along as the graph carries on. And this is, of course, n here is an integer, and usually they, you see this kind of funny z symbol here, and it actually just means that n is an element of the set of integers. So that's what that just means. It means n here has to be an integer, and not just any old number, not just any old rational number. Okay, that's where I'm going to stop with this lesson.